Next, we're just going to work through a few examples. Here we have a first order differential equation, which we need to plot the uh, frequency response for. And first, we need to convert that into a uh, transfer function. So we get uh, 2 over 2s plus 1. And it may be helpful to divide uh, both sides by 2 in order to get this form, which is easiest to identify the corner frequency, which is going to be 0.5. Now, if we have this system, we have a one behavior at low frequencies, below 0.5, where the magnitude and phase, imagine plugging in a very small value of j omega here, we're just going to get 2 for our output at an angle of 0 degrees. Similarly, we can plug in very large values of omega, and we'll get a different behavior. So if we have a very large value of j omega here, that's going to be much bigger than the 0.5. So we essentially have 1 over omega at an angle of negative 90 degrees. So let's sketch out the uh, axes here. So we have omega in radians per second, and we have 0 0.5, 5, and 50, and 0 0.05, and 0 0.005. And then similarly, we're going to plot an axis for m, where we have 1, 0.1. Actually, because the magnitude here is actually equal to 2, I'm going to switch that value to 2 and 0.2 and 0.02. Similarly, we can draw axes for phi. And I'm just going to use the same tick marks as before, and I'm not going to label everything again except maybe I'll just put a 0.5 here so that it makes it more obvious that we're just using the same axes. Phi is going to go between 0 degrees and negative 90 degrees. We're now in a position to sketch out the asymptotes and of course at low frequencies we just have the behavior of a value of 2 and then we're going to switch to a slope of minus 1 or negative 20 dB per decade or uh, minus 20 dB per decade. Uh, and we have an asymptote of 0 for the phase, switching to minus 90 at the corner. That is going to follow the asymptote, deviate during the transition area, and then return to the second asymptote like this. So we get that effect. And then similarly, if we were to do the same thing with the phase, we would have a transition plus or minus an order of magnitude. So here's the Bode plot for this differential equation or this transfer function. Let's do another example. This is a second order system where we have a transfer function h of x is equal to 100 over s squared plus 14s plus 100. And from here we can see that omega n is equal to 10 and that's the corner frequency. Whereas uh, we can also solve for zeta. Uh, zeta ends up being 0.7 given this value of omega n. So we have a one behavior for low frequencies where imagine plugging in a very small value of omega and so we're essentially going to get 100 over 100 or one angle zero. And then we also have very high frequency behavior where we're going to uh, imagine plugging in a very large value of omega th where this is going to dominate. So then we have 100 over omega squared with an angle of a phase of negative 180 degrees. So let's sketch in our axes here. We have omega, which is going to be centered around a corner frequency of 10. And we'll just include a couple orders of magnitude. And then we also are going to have a scale for m starting at 1. And actually, uh, because this is a second order, it's going to be a little bit steeper. So I need to include several magnitude orders of magnitude here. Uh, so I'm just going to include, uh, this is going to be 10 to the negative 4th and 10 to the negative 5th. For phi, we're going to use the same tick marks for omega. And so I'm just going to label the ticks uh, sparsely with a 10 there. And then we're going to have 0 degrees uh, going to negative 180 degrees. 
Now let's sketch in the tick marks, or the asymptotes, which are going to go uh, uh, a zero slope. And then when we switch to the uh, high frequencies, we're actually going to have a steeper slope of negative 40 dB per decade, or negative 2. So this is slope negative 2 or negative 40 dB per decade. And then as far as the phase goes, that's going to switch between 0 and minus 180. Next, let's sketch in the actual value, which is going to follow the asymptote for plus or minus an order of magnitude. And then we still have to determine the value at the corner, uh, which is going to give us m is negative 1 over 2 zeta. And if you plug in 0.7, that's 1 over 1.4. And that's also about 0.7. And so we're going to have about 0.7 right there, which I'll just label 1 over 2 zeta is about 0.7. Or you could also say negative 3 dB. That's what uh, 0.7 is approximately equal to. We won't worry too much about the phase, except just to ha draw in a transition there, which is going to be negative 90 degrees right at the corner. And then as long as we're here, let's just remind ourselves what happens if we have inputs uh, u, what the steady state output is going to be for these different uh, inputs. So if we fed in cosine of uh, 0.1t, we would read off from our plot that the magnitude is about 1 and the phase is about 0. So the steady state output would be roughly 1 cosine 0 0.1 t. Now when I say roughly that's because we're just making an approximation here and with a little bit more effort we could evaluate the actual number but the idea is that uh, this is actually pretty close to the actual value. We can also plug in the corner frequency of 10 and if we plug in 10 then we also know that the uh, output is roughly 0 0.7 cosine 10 t minus 90 degrees. And then I can also feed in an input, say, of a sine of 100t. And the reason why I use a sine is because uh, that's shifted 90 degrees from the cosine. And so the way we can accomplish the same shift on the output is just to write sine again. This is also going to be at 100t. And the phase at that point is going to be pretty close to 180 degrees. And then the uh, magnitude is going to be uh, essentially two orders of magnitude down from our original. And so that's going to be uh, roughly about 0.01. So these are the steady state responses. And here we're ignoring the transient because all of this frequency response uh, is not concerned with the uh, transient behavior from initial conditions.